All right, guys, I couldn't wait for a regular schedule. I have a ton of other watches that are technically supposed to be recorded before this one, but the Borealis Cascaeus is, it's in pre-order right now. So I just didn't want you guys to miss out. And I know there's a lot of people that have either already ordered their pre-order or are potentially looking or maybe don't even know. Um, I just want to get a video out there because my buddy Carlos is awesome about sending me prototypes. This is a prototype but it's like 95%, like there's, I don't see any issues with this. So I, this is like a fully well-built prototype. Um, I've had a lot of other prototypes on the channel that you could tell were prototypes, but this level, I think when you have such a relationship built as a, you know, watch maker to the producer, and when they have a relationship at this level, I think Borealis uh, prototypes are usually pretty well sorted. So let's get into the watch and then we'll do some close-ups and of course we'll do a loom shot and a wrist shot and all that stuff. This is the second go as well, so that also helps. This is version two. They hit, Borealis has done this model before, so the changes are typically just going to be the colorways and stuff like that. The core concept of the Cascaeus is, is still intact. So it is a 41 millimeter watch, but that's not the case, that's the bezel. So if you look, the bezel actually kind of overshoots the case a little bit. Um, I measured it from the backside and measured just the case at 40 millimeters. So it's gonna wear a little bit smaller, look a little bit bigger. 41 at bezel, 40 on case, 47 lug to lug. Look at the turn down on those lugs, plus they're drilled. Um, and since we're looking at the crown, I measured the crown, it's 7.4 millimeters. So if you like easy to operate crowns, this guy is the one for you. And I'll, I'll show you when we do uh, the crown action on it. The pop on this thing is phenomenal. It borderline just pushes your fingers out of the way. So 47 lug to lug, 12.4 thick. That's including the double domed sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside. You can see a nice healthy application of AR coating on that. Uh, 20 millimeter lug width here. Bracelet tapers down to 18. Pretty much milled out, it looks like all milled. There might be a couple stamp parts somewhere hidden in there, but it's milled out. Six micro adjust double pushers. Nice clean classic micro brand uh, clasp. I'm not mad about that at all. Um, you know, maybe in the future we'll see Borealis explore a little bit with their uh, clasp, but I hate them to go something that's just unwieldy and thick. I don't want this, that to happen. I would rather just stick with this if that's gonna be the case. Uh, there's a look at the case back. You have a little uh, mermaid action going on there. 300 meter water resist. The branding automatic. Miota 9015. All right. Now let's get into some other goodies. BGW 9 Loom. 120 click bezel. This one has a stainless steel bezel insert. Bezel action is very satisfying. And you can see there's there's really no play in it. There's, you know, the settle back maybe in some positions. Um, maybe a little bit of total bezel movement. But it's pretty well sorted and it snaps into place really good. Nice audible on it and everything lines up. So, so far we're batting, uh, batting pretty good with this guy here. I think overall everything's stacking up really nice. Uh, let's do that the uh, crown action here real quick. I want to show you that. Pay attention to that when this pops. Hopefully you guys could hear that. It is audible and it snaps and you can tell when that thing comes out. It's uh, pretty fun. So first position, you know, unscrewed is going to be your winding position. And then, you know, you can feel a notch and that's going to be your ghost date wheel because you can get this on a date. There's other colorways. There's two different handsets available. There's this cathedral style and there's a date a no date, and then there's a pencil style handset. So you have some options within each colorway. I think the orange dial one is the only one that's already sold out. And then when screwing this back in, I have not found it uh, necessary to backspin to catch thread. I've just been pushing in. You have to actually push it in because it's like spring loaded or something. You have to push it in pretty good and then screw it down and it works like a charm. All right, let me, uh, let me do the wrist shot first and then we'll do the close ups. And just a little teaser, um, I'll show it next to my Seamaster. This is what I've been wearing. Look how much different, um, just like going with a metal versus a black. I mean, it's so funny how watches, different dial colors, different bezel color combinations can make the watch look so different when it comes to its sizing. And if you're not familiar, 
um, with my association with Borealis. It's uh, basically I'm good friends with Carlos. We've become good friends over the years, just talking and and uh, you know him sharing the watches with me and everything like that. So I really like uh, the brand. I like what they're doing, and they have a ton of awesome models already out that are hard to get. And you know whenever they do a pre-order, they sell out. And there's always more really cool ones coming out. Speaking of which, um, Borealis is based in Portugal. And the watch models are named after cities or beaches or whatever geographical locations within Portugal. And Cascais is actually um, just a little... Ah, man, I don't know if I'm screwing this up. It's near Estoril. So I happen to have an Estoril here as well. So um, I thought it was pretty cool. I think I thought I just looked this up. I think Cascais might be west of Estoril. I can't remember. You guys will have to look it up. It's kind of fun to go look at the the Portugal map, and uh, and then you'll you'll start to recognize the cities. You're like, oh, I, I've heard of that, and it's because you wore the watch, unless you're you know familiar with that area or something. I'm not, so it's kind of fun to look in there, and maybe even predict some of the future watch models that are going to come out. I don't know, just watch geek stuff. Anyway. Um, let's do some close-ups and then we'll close you out with some loom shots before I get too carried away. Check out that dial on this white one, guys. I don't know what you call that. I wish I could get even more macro on this, but there is a lot going on and I absolutely love it. The blue lined, outlined indices is just phenomenal. The handset is also done in a blue color. Just beautiful combination of colors with this white and the blue. Um, and then you also have that, so you have like your minute, seconds track, whatever you want to call it. And then you have this other outer ring here that is just plastered with blue lines. Um, you know, I guess microseconds or something like that. I think it's just a design aspect of it. I don't really care that, you know, you're not going to use it as minutes or seconds or whatever. Um, it's just very cool. I think if that was excluded from the design, it wouldn't look as cool. I think there's just the right amount of blue on this thing to really set it off. And of course, BGW9 Loom is gonna be brilliant white when it's not glowing, and it'll be a nice cool blue when it is glowing. So all the printing on the bezel and on the indices and handset match very closely to the dial. I think, I can't be the only one that's like going gaga over these white dial divers and watches in general. I just, they're just awesome. So there you go, there's a look at the Loom. It's Borealis does a phenomenal job with their loom, whether it's the BGW9 or the C3X1 or whatever combination they choose. They do a nice, healthy application, so and they use a quality product, so that way you know it's gonna be nice and bright and it's gonna be long lasting. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Big thanks to for Carlos for constantly sending over awesome new prototypes. I'll see you guys on the next video.